Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, The Silver Fox. And you are just not going to believe this one. Um, this is one of those where you literally, you're, you're going to listen to the words I say and you're going to go, what? Because it is so bonkers. It is, it is so delusional. It is such an absolute variance from what you know to be true that you have to start questioning your own sanity. It's that bad. You think, surely he isn't that mad. It must be me. But no, he is that mad, that delusional, and that completely out of kilter with reality that I seriously think he does now need, finally, psychiatric help. I think all the things that have gone on very recently in his mind has now finally taken its toll and Hamza Yusuf is completely and utterly insane. Perhaps now it is time for him to hang up his spurs, resign, wander off, get the, the, the psychiatric help he so obviously needs and try and calm down from all the stresses and strains going on in his personal and professional life. I think it's time for him to go because what he's just said is immensely embarrassing if you want to be true. He's mad. He's truly mad. Here goes. Before we get into it, I would ask if you could please hit the subscribe button. Uh, YouTube does not like political channels. We get pushed down. And so in order to spread the word, to spread the truth and to spread stuff like this, we need your help. Plus, I'm on a drive. I would like to get to 10,000 by the end of February. It's entirely achievable, but I desperately need your help to do it. And all you regulars, all you 60, 65 percent of you who are regular viewers who are yet to subscribe, do please hit the button. You don't want to miss anything because things like this come up every now and again. And boy, this don't half bring a smile to your face, joy in your heart. And you think the guy's completely lost it. It's absolutely time for him to go. Hamza Youssef claims the SNP have been up front about its failures and also that he's not comfortable with the national in the party name. When, when, when have the SNP ever admitted that they've got anything wrong? They always blame other people. They always point the finger. There's always an excuse. It's not them. It's not their lying. It's not their stupidity. It's not their ignorance. It's not their ineptness. It's not their culpability. It's not their criminality. No, no, no. It's always someone else, usually Westminster. This is a joke. And as for not being comfortable with the national in the party name, no, he'd rather have People's Republic. He's that left-wing and Marxist, isn't he? Unbelievable bollocks this is. Anyway, the First Minister insisted that his party have always admitted its mistakes, despite blaming the UK government for its failures in Scotland, including the deposit return scheme, which we've covered to the nth degree and that would have perfectly worked wonderfully was it not for the fact that Lorna Slater is a moron who thought that if she owned glass it would help the glass industry and the glass industry is saying no we already recycle something like 95% of glass and the system that's there works perfectly leave it alone and all the experts saying no no it works brilliantly just do it without glass it's fantastic and she didn't like it and pulled it Nothing at all to do with Westminster. Or are they saying, oh no, it's because we didn't get that uh, that notification back in time. The one that they didn't request until six weeks before. Should have been done at day one. These people are out of their tiny, tiny, bigoted minds. Hamza Youssef has claimed, <laughs> Hamza Youssef has claimed the SNP have been up front about its failures, despite his insistence on blaming the UK government government for issues to befall Scotland. Anyway, uh, he admitted that he was not comfortable with the national aspect of the party's name due to the bad nationalist connotations around the world. I'm going to suggest particularly the party that his party is based on, the National Socialist Party. That was a whole ball game of fun and games, wasn't it? That was marvellous. What a marvellous party the National Socialists were. So it's no wonder the SNP decided to put national in their name 
as well. They so admired those guys. Stole a lot of their policies too, it must be said. Uh, he also discussed the ongoing police probe into the SNP's finances while being interviewed by Nick Robinson on BBC Radio 4, as he confessed that Operation Branchform has clearly been uh, an impact on how the public view them. Well, yes, the public view them as crooks and criminals and corrupt. But then again, they always did. It's just highlighted it, underlined it, put a couple of stars by it so that people are completely aware of what they are. The nationalist vote has collapsed in recent polling, putting them neck and neck with a resurgent Scottish Labour. And we know why. It's funny, isn't it? It was doing ever so well until a certain party took over. A certain party who is incapable of leading, who has not got a clue on what he's doing, and yet has, since day one, blamed everyone else for his failings. He failed at health. He failed at justice. Why not fail as leader as well? Mr Yousaf's time in Butte House has been beset with scandals and disasters as he's had to deal with the fallout from Nicola Sturgeon's lengthy reign. This includes the scrapping of various policies pushed forward by his predecessor and the ongoing civil war within the party. And long may that reign. Uh, during his interview, he admitted the SNP government had, had fail has had failures and made mistakes. Well, that's the first time anyone has ever admitted that since 1999. Ever since, I don't think I've ever heard that happened before. He said, we haven't achieved everything we've wanted to achieve. <laughs> you haven't achieved anything. Any, nothing. Those few policies that have scraped through have been damaging and against what people want. You've done nothing significant to help people. You've only destroyed wherever you've trod. You are the, uh, the omen of doom and death. You are an omen of destruction. He says, where we've had failures, though, every aspect of every policy, he said, we've not st stepped up to the mark. We've been upfront about that and we've endeavoured to learn from that and learn lessons from that. No, you haven't. Name one. Name one. You cannot because there hasn't been one. Uh, but the SNP have often been criticising for attempting to blame the UK government for its failings, including the, D the DRS and the most recent budget. Comparisons are often made to Wales as well, where Mr Yousaf is questioned by FMQs by Labour. First Minister was also asked about his party's brand of nationalism, with Mr Robertson describing how it's seen in some parts of the globe as hostile to others and aggressive. And he used India and Pakistan as examples where he described it as destructive and dangerous. Mr Yousaf refused to make comparisons with the partition in India and Pakistan. Well, we're not surprised about that, are we folks? He said, and what is happening here in Scotland? He said, I've never really been comfortable with the fact that we have national in our party name. And yet you felt perfectly able to join it. You're not a Scottish national. You weren't born in Scotland. You don't have Scottish culture or heritage. So you must have joined for purely cynical um, reasons to see how far you could get, see how much you could grab. You certainly didn't do it out of education, did you? Uh, and he said, it's not because the founding members of the SNP had any far-right inclination. They certainly didn't. No, of course they didn't. They were socialists. Of course there was no far-right. National socialism, the clue's in the name. He said, in any nationalist inclination, the way you express there, because it can be misinterpreted. But we are the Scottish National Party. And we have a very strong brand, a strong identity of fascism, of left-wing socialism, of national socialism, of wearing pretty uniforms by Hugo Boss. Surprised you haven't marched into Poland yet. Uh, anyway, he said, we've, put, we've worked really hard to make it very clear, and I think it's understood that we are a civic national party. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're a bigoted, anti-English, hate-filled bunch of incompetent Marxists who want a one-party state, totalitarian and controlling from top to bottom, which is why you want to interfere in every single sector of every single industry, because you cannot bear the idea that some people are going about their day without complete and utter micromanagement from a bunch of wankers at Holyrood. Anyway, he said on Operation Branchform that he bemoaned the impact it has had on support and the public perception of the SNP. People are starting to see what the SNP truly are, is what he means. And he doesn't like the fact that people are seeing what the SNP truly are. He said the likes of Sturgeon, Murrell and Beatty have all been arrested with the probe so far. 
There's not enough of them arrested, and they did release them, which is also unfortunate. Uh, it's looking for the, uh, they say, allegedly missing 660,000. The definitely missing 660,000. Stolen, spent, foisted away, embezzled. Who knows? Uh, anyway, he said, the police investigation being one of the most difficult times for the party. Is he on about branch mob or the one into his own family members? He says, there's no ifs or buts or maybes about it. There's clearly been an impact in terms of how we were perceived by the public and issues of trust. Again, is he talking about the party or his own family? He says, I've got to work hard. Again, is it about the party or about his own family? It's a, it's a complicated thing. All these different police investigations. He says, I hope I've been doing that over the past 10 months. He says, I've got to work hard and make sure that people know, whatever the outcome of that police investigation is, that the SNP is a party that they can trust. Well, they haven't yet. They've lied. They've stolen. They've broken every promise. They make agreements with the local authority, which they break within weeks, because the Grand Mufti, the brain of Britain, sits there and goes, my speech is shit. Let's freeze council tax. I haven't consulted anyone. I haven't costed it. I haven't even told my own cabinet. But hey, it sounds good. What a knob. You couldn't make this up. This guy lives in a world of delusion. In a world of whatever's going on in his tiny little mind. I wouldn't want to go in there. It's a fairly awful place, I think. But he is, he's completely lost touch with reality. I think all the problems with, you know, the uh, the alleged um, a, a, um, affair with Adam Kazir coming out, I think with the problems of his grand matrix mistress uh, being arrested, with the fact that he finally realised he's not a leader, with the pressure of Kate Forbes chasing and snapping at his heels, with his family members getting arrested and getting arrested again, with his second wife um, trying to use public money to pay blood money to Hamas to get her father back and then lying about this alleged brother which cannot possibly be a brother. All these things are all amassing together. His mind has gone. He's come off the hook. He's living there, you know, hallucinating about the world he lives in. And I think it's sad. And I think he needs to resign and go and get a lot of help. I think he needs a lot of help and support. And hopefully... I mean, I wouldn't wash. I wouldn't want to have. Uh, I wouldn't wish. I mean, uh, you know, that kind of mental distress on people. I'm not that kind of person. But I do think he needs to take time off and go and sort himself out, get cured, you know, or at least in a padded room. Coming up. How can he possibly sit there and say those things with a straight face? Even he must know it is absolutely ridiculous, unless, of course. He truly has lost his mind. It's the only explanation. Either he's completely lost his mind or he is pulling the biggest con of his life. It's unbelievable though, isn't it? Nobody believes a word he says anyway, but this, this is a whole new, this is a whole new dimension. It's either the biggest lie he's ever told or he truly believes it and he needs deep help. He needs to be back on the meds. And not the ones from his brother-in-law. Proper meds, you know. Anyway, I shall stop there. And I will just let this one go. I mean, do please hit the subscribe button. Though. We need to get that uh, that 10,000. Uh, do please uh, hit the like button. And I will speak to you next time. Thanks a lot. And goodbye. <laughs>